Uh, thanks so much indeed for being with us here on DXB today, where we're focusing on all things startups today. Uh, is this startup central, this being Dubai at the moment? Is it easier to get a venture off the ground here than it might be in other parts of the world? Can we use the word easy? Where do you get the funding? How do you scale? When's the right time to exit? All these questions, answers and more. That's why we've put together some very special guests. Next guest is a young entrepreneur and startup consultant dedicating her efforts uh, to facilitating freelance opportunities among well, the youth and others. Please welcome to the show uh, for a conversation, Lulu Cousin Buzz. Thanks for having with, have the, thanks for joining us uh, for this conversation. Conversation with Lulu? Yes, absolutely. It's got a ring to it, hasn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll interview you now. I'll, 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 we are going to turn I'll the take tables. Over. I'll We're going to turn over the tables now. on you, if you like, because yeah. the highly popular podcast that you host, Conversations with Lulu, mm -hmm. brings together entrepreneurs and that entrepreneurial spirit as well. I suppose. The same question I've put to all of our guests tonight. Is there something special in the water here at the moment when it comes to Dubai? entrepreneurs? Yeah, it's a great place to be. I mean, a lot of us have been here for a long time. I've been here for 21 years and have seen the startup scene evolve tremendously. When I was fundraising for my company, there used to be five venture capital firms, maybe even less across the entire region. And now you have, I don't know, over 50, 60, maybe even more uh, that are investing across different stages. Dubai is a great, great place to live, great place to start a family, uh, to own a home, uh, safe. Uh, so uh, I think attracting talent here is not an issue anymore. You know, people used to look at the GCC 20 years ago and think, oh, there's hardship. It's, uh, mm. you know, it's a tough life. I mean, you've been here for a, for yeah. a while as well. I just wonder whether those, you know, do those investors, be they angel, be they capital, be they whatever, the venture mm. capitalists coming into town, those firms setting up, are they following the talent at the moment uh, or are they just taking advantage of the lifestyle here? There must be the talent there yeah, for absolutely. them to be looking at. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot of talent here and there's, again, attracting talent here is, um, is relatively <coughs> easy today. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you still have like some shortage across, for example, tech talent because you don't have a lot of the um, uh, um, specialties here, let's say, in, in universities to graduate this sort of high tech yeah. talent. So, Still, a lot of entrepreneurs are outsourcing talent to places like India or Eastern Europe. Uh, but I think this, this is changing and it will, it will continue to change. Lulu, I'm very um, curious to know about your podcast, Conversations with Lulu. I'm an aspiring podcaster, just putting yeah. it out there. <laughs> and um, through your podcast, you've had the pleasure to interview so many different entrepreneurs. What would you say are some of the valuable experiences and insights or pearls of wisdom that you've collected from them? Yeah, so I've I've had 74 um, guests on the on the show. It's my it's my fifth year, and you know I, I love them all, and I think there's always something uh, valuable. I think there a few things that sort of stood out for me is um, a couple. So once I was uh, having a conversation with uh, someone called Stephen Bartlett. He's a he's a famous uh, podcaster from the from the UK, and uh, and he's actually relatively young, and he's quite successful as a, as a business person. And he told me something like you need to be able to hire people that you are intimidated by. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought this is very interesting, right? Because he was really emphasizing the importance of building a very strong team. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need to be the smartest person in the room as an entrepreneur, but you can hire people that are actually much smarter than you, even intimidate you. Uh, so I thought that was really um, interesting. Another one was, uh, was by someone called GV Ravi Shankar. He's a, he's a managing partner at a very big uh, global fund here. And um, he talked about the art of, the art of, some, uh, of kintsugi, which is basically, uh, it's a Japanese art of mending broken pottery. And he made the analogy between uh, you know, entrepreneurship and, and basically broken pottery. You will go through so many hardship, but then ultimately when you mend it, um, they mend it by putting like a, a golden or a silver type of liquid and they stick it together and it looks beautiful and so the analogy of you know you go through so many uh, problems and ups and downs as an entrepreneur but then you kind of like rebuild yourself and the outcome actually Just ends up being make sure you got loads of super glue yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love the way Lulu you just uh, casually drop those names like oh yeah you might know this person like they're big in the game man. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and I've heard that um, analogy before with uh, it's about high, uh, a, a C student who mm -hmm. hires a B student mm -hmm. to teach an A student. 
So okay. it's something like that in, in that sort of community space of, about building a team. Because I find that's one of the, the hardest things is about harboring relationships yeah. um, and having successful people around you so uh, you will work together in harmony. That's one of the most difficult things that I've found um, yeah. in life, not even just in business, you know, so it's one of those ones. But you have gone full circle. Mm -hmm. uh, you've started, you've sold, you, you've done the whole the whole thing mm -hmm. um what advice would you give to uh people to have that sustainability of of uh starting a business and maintaining themselves so i mean in in the early days uh, right make sure that you are solving a problem that is worth solving i think a lot of entrepreneurs might end up going into a business that might be really small ultimately and you're not solving a big problem so that's important. The other thing is fundraising. A lot of entrepreneurs struggle when they go out to look for money. And I think you really need to understand that not every business uh, is a venture capital backable business. So some businesses are what we call lifestyle businesses. So you can make a good profit, you can have a good life, but it's not gonna grow as fast as, you know, what a venture capitalist may wanna, may wanna see. So it's not venture backable. So don't waste your time going to talk to the, to the wrong people. Um, hire great people. I mean, I think everybody says that. Uh, I'm not saying anything new here, but the team is extremely important. Have great co-founders with you. I started a business alone. Uh, it was extremely challenging, and I don't think anyone has to go through that. So find the right partners uh, is very important. Um, build the right networks along the way. You know, look for money when you don't really need the money. I think that's also an important thing. Yeah. It's always a signal. Like when you want to fundraise, nobody wants to give you money, but when you don't need the money, people are just gonna like flock to you. So there's uh, there's a bit of there's a bit of that as well. Beautiful. It's really interesting. You talk about you know the the uh, the, the, the uh, egg and chicken. You know which one comes first? Do you raise money or you know you want money but then you don't? No one gives it to you, and then when you don't want it, they give it to you. I, I think that's a really interesting uh, analogy, and I like the way you put it. Uh, my question to you is on women and startups. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of aspiring women that want to be mm -hmm. you know. Um, who you are today? So, what is your message to them, and what would you, uh, what would you, what would be your, your words for them? Is that if you know, if life gives you an opportunity, just grab it. Uh, so, the last one of the last guests I've had on the podcast, she's a she's a great entrepreneur, a woman, and she told me that basically she started working on her startup when she was on maternity leave. So she had just had her baby. Wow. And she she met her co-founder, and she saw the opportunity, and she decided to take it, and. Was the timing right? No, absolutely not. It was like the worst time to start a business, but it was an opportunity that she felt that if she didn't take, uh, she, you know, she won't get this opportunity again. So take so the opportunity. Take the opportunity. You know, there's always going to be, a, it's never going to be the right time, right? And, and if she's done it, uh, then, you know, anyone is, can do it. Is opportunity the same as risk? Is taking an opportunity the same as taking a risk or can you mitigate risk? Um, I, I wouldn't say they're the same. I mean, an opportunity is, again, you know, uh, starting a business, okay, is risky. So maybe maybe you can say uh, an opportunity in that, uh, you in must, that context. You've got, to look at it from the, you've got to look at it as an opportunity rather than a risk. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 the risk is evident there, I would say. And then your the opportunity will come to you that like you ha the risk will already be present but the opportunity might give you a stepping stone to take that risk yeah and so, also yeah. look how how you can de-risk it right so so there's always risk in starting a business but but what are what are the steps that you're going to take to make it less risky for example finding the right partners finding the right amount of money building the right team solving a big problem all of this will sort of de-risk it along the way very well put, exactly, I would say. Lulu, thank you so much. Uh, some words of wisdom, some pearls of knowledge. Thank you. It's been fantastic. I uh, really appreciate you being here. And um, yeah, uh, this must be one of the shortest conversations yes. you've had, really. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. I usually go on for an hour. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> well, nah, we'll, we'll talk after the show, for sure, okay. definitely. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. Now, uh, Ash, I believe you have the DXB in 60 for our guest co-host. Absolutely. Mahmoud, are you ready for this? Uh, let's go for it. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you as many questions as possible within 60 seconds, and you need to try and answer all of them. All right? OK. So your time starts now. Do Three. I need to answer as fast as possible? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of like a rapid fire. So all right, you want to do your best to get as many questions through. All right? So your time is three, two, one. Uh, let's go. If you weren't an entrepreneur, what would you be doing? Working at a bank. Your motto in life and in work? 
Uh, yeah, take a risk. Don't wait around, it's not coming back. A superpower you wish you had? The ability to read people's minds. <laughs> uh, your favorite dish from under 500? Uh, and there's a few, but I would go with the uh, chicken burrito bowl. Your first job? I worked at Showtime, no, I worked when I was 13 fixing cars in my dad's company. Your go-to destination in Dubai? Uh, next to my house, there's a little coffee shop called Fields. It's, it's next to Kite Beach, some place called Kite Beach. There's, it's a coffee shop and next to Kite Beach. I sit there, I spend half an hour a day uh, by myself. That's nice. A common challenge you've seen when launching a startup? Uh, people not wanting to do the work, thinking that uh, I'm going to pay someone else to do the work. No, if you're in the startup, you're doing the work. If you're my co-founder, we're splitting the work. No, we're not, you know, the whole idea of doing the startup is for us to do the work and to get her off the ground. And if you're coming with that mentality that you want to keep your full-time job and, you know, that's not working for me. Mahmoud, finally, we've <laughs> run short of time, but I have to squeeze this question sure. in. Why Dubai? Why Dubai? Because the ease of doing business, the ease of uh, making relationships, I'm in Emirati, I'm out there on LinkedIn. Anyone can follow me and write to me. Uh, and I would say, get the sales navigator, pay for the, for the service of DMing someone that's not your contact, because that's how you grow your business. And I think outreach, do outreach, see who responds to you. I think Dubai is open for business. I, uh, from my point of view, I think Dubai is open for business. I've been to uh, uh, other countries in the GCC. I'm from Dubai, I know Dubai. I scaled the company from Dubai across the GCC. So I can tell you that doing a business from Dubai, uh, you can do it. Mahmoud, thank you so much for joining us on thank the you show. Thank you for having me. You did me. really well in the quiz. And of course, thank you to <laughs> you too, Lulu. Yeah, big thanks to both of our guests, uh, Mahmoud and of course Lulu for joining us. We ain't finished yet, yet though. Uh, in fact, do stay with us. Yeah, we promised you drums, we promised you percussion, and of course, the beautiful voice of Lena playing us out.